Welcome to our session, Unburdening Regulatory Reporting, today with Fernando Rico from IDN and Michael Schröter from uh, Bank of Scotland, which is a member of Lloyd's Banking Group. Before I hand over to my panelists, uh, I would like to use the chance to also quickly introduce myself. So my name is Moritz Blank. I'm Head of Managed Services at Bearing Point RegTech, and I'm the responsible product manager for our managed services offering, which is around IT outsourcing for rec reporting solutions. So, Fernando, um, can I hand over to you that you quickly introduce yourself? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, yeah, so my name is Fernando. Uh, I'm actually originally from Brazil. I've uh, been living here in, uh, in Europe for five years now, currently working for Agen. Agen is a payment service provider which has a banking license uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, previously uh, joining Agen, uh, I've worked in uh, many other uh, financial services industry. I've worked for big four firms, but also for banks back in Brazil. Uh, and my background is mainly uh, yeah, in, in finance, corporate finance, reporting, uh, and also some treasury uh, function. And pretty happy to be part of this, uh, this panel here. Michael, what about you? Do you want to introduce yourself as well shortly? Yeah, of course. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm jo I joined uh, Lloyd's uh, Bank of Scotland uh, in mid-2018. And here I was a major part of the project uh, in terms of EU exit program uh, of the Lloyds Banking Group in UK uh, in preparation of the um, upcoming Brexit. Um, and uh, it was a decision to uh, switch the branch existing in uh, Germany into a full bank, uh, BaFin licensed. Um, and so um, especially REC reporting was a major part of this change. And um, during the project, um, I um, helped out um, to implement a new REC reporting software as well as um, a REC reporting department and all, all relevant pro, pro processes uh, around this. Um, since October 2019, uh, now I'm working as a manager for REC reporting change um, in Lloyd's uh, GmbH. Uh, and in this position, I'm responsible um, for almost all professional, technical, uh, and pro processual um, changes and uh, developments um, for REC reporting. Um, yeah, and I have now almost 10 to 12 years uh, experience in REC reporting. And so, yeah, I have a little bit track record on this and um, maybe this is also why I'm here today. So <laughs> I can contribute hopefully to an interesting discussion. So thanks, Michael. Yeah. Thanks, Fernando. Um, really looking forward to that exciting um, panel here. Um, also that you contribute with your experience here. So today's uh, panel is about unburdening regulatory reporting, meaning what can be done to make reporting easier. Um, as I told you, my background, so my focus is on IT outsourcing. I would be really keen to get your opinions here on how that can be used to unburdening regulatory reporting. So before speaking about unburdening, and definitely in the recent years, uh, financial institutions have been confronted with continuously increasing regulatory requirements from supervisors in Europe, um, but also from, um, from central banks. So my question to you would be, um, how do you expect the development of this trend in the, let's say, next five years? So will we come to an end there or will this increasement stay ahead of us? So what's your opinion on that, Fernando? Uh, I think as uh, as the financial market develops, I think the the level of granularity that the regulator will require from the from the banks would mainly increase. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to increase the whole regulatory requirement uh, landscape. However, I think they want to see more and more of uh, of the type of products and the, the type of uh, clients and merchants that we work with. So I think for the future, I expect this to be yeah, increased uh, significantly. We actually worked uh, with the, the Dutch Central Bank in a pilot on the, on, in the past year to create a real-time reporting solution that they would have access to our data in, in real time. Uh, and I think this, this also can create some, uh, some additional uh, yeah, opportunities for the banks to decrease a bit the, the burden of the regulatory reporting, still providing them with very accurate and, uh, and complete data they have more, uh, yeah, more visibility of. It's interesting. Michael, what's your view on that? Yeah, we cannot predict the future uh, in general, but I think um, it's um, um, not, not difficult to say that the pressure will remain high and also the frequency of changes. 
Um, on the one hand, I think we know that we have some major points ahead, like uh, Basel 4, CRR3. Yeah, if we take out uh, already CRR2, because this is known and we are all working on this. Um, but I think we also see some, uh, as an example, uh, the German, um, yeah, the, the German Ministry of Finance uh, together with Bundesbank uh, tries to introduce a granular mortgage reporting. So I think some of these changes are upcoming and, and known. Um, but what we also seen uh, over the last years without a um, really major um, yeah, regulatory change package is that we have these um, smaller uh, changes. Uh, normally, um, by updating the uh, EBA data point model, um, which sounds not big, but um, sometimes it's really complex and also a lot of uh, work for, for, for the banks. And I also assume that we will see further smaller statistical and national requirement changes. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think we will see here um, a, much change in the futures, so the pressure will remain high. But I also, uh, what Frederico says, I also have a clear hope um, that we will some or see some more efficient way or ways to um, get into these requirements um, and also from the regulatory and supervisory side uh, that they not say, okay, we introduce this like we did it uh, mm -hmm. over the last five or ten years, every, every year a new report or a new template. Um, so hopefully we will see a consolidation uh, and more efficient way to introduce uh, new stuff in record reporting. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. So you mentioned an interesting point. So we are we, we cannot predict the future. So I think nobody is uh, thinking of um, doing the Twecta conference uh, online via webcams this year. So um, COVID-19 hit us all. <laughs> um, so. What we see from a um, managed service perspective is that due to the COVID pandemic, business continuity management has moved into the focus of attention, let's say. So I've personally spoken to clients which weren't in, a mo in one moment to the other able to switch to remote work. Yeah, they, for just a simple example, but had to, had to order, remo had to order re remote uh, notebooks. So how did your institution manage that? How did you ensure business continuity over the last months uh, in the light of COVID-19? Michael. Yeah, uh, I think it's, it's not hard to say it was a challenging time for all of us, all involved, and not only financial branches are affected. Um, I think we are in a good way that there is in general a possibility to work from home work remotely, um, have good uh, uh, technique available um, to do such online conferences and all these kind of stuff. Um, and especially um, Lloyds as a yeah, dynamic uh, and, and relatively new bank um, with teams across Berlin, Amsterdam and several hubs across UK um, with support from the parent company um, as the Lloyd Bank uh, PLC. Um, it's not really new for us to work or collaborate uh, yeah, uh, over a long distance. Um, we used uh, work uh, remotely, um, have a telephone and online conferencing and, and so on. Uh, so the good one is the tech technology was there. Uh, we improved this technology by introducing some new software um, also yeah, give some guidelines out uh, how to act. Yeah, switch on your camera that uh, the teams can see them. Yeah, but to be honest, uh, it was also something uh, new to um, yeah try something new because mm. I think the most uh, or let me say it in this way: the work can be done remotely uh, in general uh, normally, but remain efficiency, um, lead the team. Um, keep up happiness, uh, some kind of uh, such kind of stuff is not easy, yeah, especially for uh, line manager, senior management. It's, it's hard to, um, to, to find new ways. Um, and maybe back to, to bearing point managed service. Um, from my perspective, I can say it's good that we have a partner like bearing point. Um, also, not only in managed service, also on the consulting side, because um, here, collaboration is still there. Um, I think it's very professional service availability, I think was not affected, uh, at least from our side. 
And I think it's good to have a partner like Bearing Point on the site who can also cope with such a situation. Yeah, and um, it was good on this site. Thanks, Michael. What's your view on that, Fernando? How did IDN come through that? Yeah. I guess you're a very young company, so yeah. this hadn't caused any problems, or yeah, no, <laughs> am I, think, I wrong? Uh, no, I, I think I think a lot of what Michael said it's it's super relevant. Uh, I think yeah, as as you mentioned, IGN is a technology company, so it was built to uh, allow people to work from wherever they are. We are we have an international footprint. We have, of course, our headquarters seated in Amsterdam. But we have big presence in the US, in APEC, and also in Latin America. So uh, as soon as all these lockdown measures came into place, uh, the shift from working from the office to working from home was not very impactful for people. So we had a technology, we had the infrastructure to support uh, this, uh, this new normal, uh, how they say it. Uh, and I think we managed to, uh, to succeed very well. Uh, we, we kept growing, we're still hiring people. And I think nowadays, this is the main challenge for everyone, is how can you make sure that you are still onboarding people and these people uh, are able to feel part of the company and are able to also contribute to other people. So I think right now that our main focus around the situation is more on people. How can we make sure that people are coping with this, uh, with this situation, how currently is, because you're not able to work at the office. And at iGEM, we have a very uh, collaborative uh, way of working. So if I had a question about something at the office, I would just get out of my chair, go to the, to the next floor and talk to someone. So we're trying to create this new culture of yeah, calling and not just booking calls every now and then so we can still make the business efficient and, and effective. And also we can integrate the new people who are joining the company. But uh, a lot of what Michael said, I think we, we relate a lot of, uh, of this as well. And I think there are many challenges uh, during these times, yeah. Thanks, Fernando. Um, you both mentioned, let's talk a bit about uh, what trends see we at the horizon. And you both mentioned some parts which I yeah, truly see the same. So um, one of the trends we see is that the data the mid authorities is getting more and more granular in the last years. So you mentioned that you are in POC with uh, your supervisor in the Netherlands. Michael, you mentioned uh, property reportings, which is also on a granular base. Also, if you look back on what has been happening on the transaction reporting side and on a credit, um, we see a trend towards submitting more and more granular data. How is your view on that? And um, how do you ensure your financial institution is prepared for that? Fernando, could you give some uh, insights here? Yeah, of course. Uh, so as I mentioned, iGen is a, is a technology company. So uh, every system that we use, mostly use, it's built in-house. So we have the full control over the data. So we build one single platform for the solutions that we currently provide our merchants. Uh, and we have full control over the data that goes through this, uh, this single platform. So what we try to do is we try to discuss before any new implementation is done internally or any changes are done on the systems that we currently have to make sure that we are still uh, getting all the requirements from the regulator. So right now, it's just a matter of uh, putting some developing, developing work on a certain, uh, on a certain uh, yeah, functionality of the system so we can get out the data that the regulator wants to see from us. So I think the fact that we have a, a one single platform with not a lot of legacy systems, that makes us very uh, efficient on the way that we provide data to the, to the regulator. And that's the way that we want to keep working in the future because we also have some, some goals to provide our merchants with even more products that we currently do. Yeah. yeah, I think that's quite interesting uh, what you mentioned regarding legacy. I think um, when uh, as a new joiner to the market, it uh, definitely is yeah more easy to make some kind of a greenfield approach yeah, than some kind of an, a bank which is in business for many, many years and also grown IT infrastructure over the last years. So definitely. Michael, how is it on your side? So you said you opened uh, a bank in Germany uh, as kind of a result of Brexit. So. How, how, did, how do you see the trend of getting data more and more granular and how do you deal with that? Yeah, I think uh, the, um, let me say that the, the time or the history of your uh, infrastructure or IT infrastructure and system, that's the key. And uh, I think could be really a burden if you are an established and, and um, longer existing bank. Uh, and I think it's, it's, uh, it's 
could be a problem for most of the banks because to replace such an old system by a, a new technology, uh, it's a, it's always a huge project. Yeah, and it um, costs money in the first instance without any uh, leverage or, or merits uh, on a short way. Um, uh, for us, uh, to be honest, uh, the um, entering granular data reporting uh, is more or less new to us. <laughs> uh, we will start uh, reporting Anna credit by end of month, uh, first time. Uh, we had here some some transition period uh, granted by by um, Bundesbank uh, in general. So uh, we will see how we can cope with them. But um, my clear opinion here is this can be only covered uh, via a good and stable data quality, clear definition uh, in data model, as well as delivery. So um, what Frederico says, um, yeah, or sorry, Fernando says, <laughs> um, it, it, it needs data ownership, um, clear definitions, and um, this is the only way uh, to, to ensure such a granular reporting because you cannot make much uh, corrections or um, within the reporting process. So, um, I think the regulator goes strictly this, this way also in the future because maybe it's the only way to get enough pressure on an automated solution um, on yeah, established data quality. And um, yeah, so I think we will see more of them in the future, but to be honest, one of my clear expectation on the other hand is if the uh, regulator gets these granular data, then he should also think about how to use this data uh, to increase efficiency because I think I, maybe you have some more figures or uh, estimations on this, I, I, how much money was spent over the last years to implement our credit across Europe, yes, in, in very different ways. Uh, and to be honest, I think now it's the time that the regulator gives some of these, I would say, money, yeah, on the other hand, effort back to the institutes, institutions. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think here's a clear, um, yeah, non, not, not to say one way direction. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see what, <laughs> what uh, we will see in the future. But uh, this is a clear uh, expectation on my, on my side that uh, Central Bank. Uh, Bundesbank in Germany, uh, Dutch National Bank, um, have a good understanding of the data, develop uh, good um, progress and processing of the data, and then come back to the institutions and say, okay, uh, we understood that your business looks like this, um, and we can um, yeah, get rid of older reports, um, and yeah, moving back from or moving away from total sum based reporting, granular reports, uh, and use this data then also in an efficient way. And this yeah. is um, what we, what I expect and hope yeah, on this way. Yeah. I think you mentioned um, some kind of my personal second trend here, um, which is not only getting more granular, but also there's a need for more data standardization. Yeah, it's not only about pushing rec reporting frameworks to the market, but it's also thinking on how could be a standardized industry-wide data model could look like. Um, to end up on the trend side of things, um, third trend we see in the market is that there is definitely room for collaboration here. So um, we believe that there will be yeah, a future state where, as we call it, co-opetition, seeing banks working together on non-core business processes like rec reporting and competing in the core business processes. Like uh, you don't get rewarded when you hand in your reporting one day early, earlier than your competitors. So uh, why don't work together on that? And what I'm really interested or curious in is um, what's your opinion on yeah, working, cooperating together with the sector? Um, if you have made already experiences there, I'd be really interested in your thoughts here, Fernando. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think uh, cooperation and benchmarking with the other banks for us being a, a fairly new company in the market is very, very, very beneficial. Uh, I think I've joined some of the, of the, of the calls that we had, the groups uh, gathering that we have with Varying Point uh, to discuss like how the other banks also see the challenges for the next reporting periods and i think we can learn a lot from uh, from other banks and uh, we always try to discuss uh, our interpretation of new regulations for example with uh, with other people to make sure that the, our understanding is always in line 
uh, and I think, yeah, I think it's only beneficial for, for the banks if they work together and, uh, and can leverage on knowledge from other people as well. Thanks. Michael, what's your view on that? Yeah, um, I only have a personal uh, view on this and um, my feeling is that especially cooperation across uh, banks or, or a group of banks is still more, more or less on a low level. Yeah. Um, what uh, Fernando says, I think on um, single person level, especially subject matter expert level, um, we have this cooperation. Yeah, you call a good guy by phone and say, hey, how, how, how do you make this or um, solve this problem? Um, but to be honest, um, I'm not aware that we see really big corporations or joint ventures, which brings a huge effort, maybe on cost level, on, on um, effort level that they said, let's split the requirements and bring them together. Um, from my previous um, uh, bank, uh, I worked before, uh, I know that there was an um, initiative um, and some more ideas on, on development bank level um, to, to build such corporations uh, and, co and uh, co yeah, uh, collaboration. But it's always difficult, yeah, decision mm -hmm. processes, uh, budget, uh, money, um, also responsibilities, um, decision making, all this kind of stuff. And yeah, it's difficult. Uh, it needs a clear structure. Maybe really you have to uh, found or establish a joint venture with own, with own staff, um, own responsibility and decision making persons. And um, to be honest, normally it's, uh, if you have to implement a new regulatory requirement or an, or a massive change, um, general in general you have in, have much pressure on your own bank, so that you first think how can I solve my problems in the first way, yeah. And um, so my feeling is that banks uh, will remain try to cover uh, rec reporting projects mostly on its own in the future, um, and. Another reason which um, under, underlines this could be also the individuality and the unique uh, of the system uh, and mm -hmm. the IT structure of the bank because uh, record reporting is highly connected to data sources, data flows, uh, feeds, processes. And if this is not really uh, in line with, with, with your partner or co co partner then I think it makes no really sense. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it must be a good mm. gap analyze or, or impact analyze in advance makes it really sense. Uh, and so I think it, it will remain a topic, but it will also remain hard to, uh, to establish such. Uh, fully agree. Fully agree, Michael. I think um, you mentioned that import, important point um, through the lines um, that it's, crucial to find a governance structure on working together it's not about the content itself but finding a governance structure where banks can cooperate with each other i think that's uh, a major point to, uh, which must be achieved in the first place and a governance structure that really works um but um to some extent especially with uh, Rectech factory with our managed service offering we we try to head this direction of a share economy so at least uh, in some extent we share infrastructure together where we operate um, our solution on or especially our course 360 banking so um, when we talk about um, managed services and IT outsourcing um, how do you think this will evolve in the next years um, with regards to IT outsourcing for the whole market but also um, do you have any thoughts about um, what, what cloud solutions we might see in the future? So um, will it stay on private cloud? Will we um, head towards public cloud? What are your opinions on that? Fernando. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, was, uh, I was ready for that. Yeah, I think when it comes to IT outsourcing uh, and cloud solutions, I'm going to speak mostly from our perspective of, uh, of this kind of, uh, of propositions. Uh, we're still very, uh, let's say conservative when it comes to data security. Uh, so we are very careful when it comes to uh, outsourcing our own functions or some of the functions that we can do in-house, uh, including, uh, including cloud solutions, for example. Uh, 
so I think for now, uh, like I said, we try to be very careful and uh, not follow trends, but do the things our way. Uh, but I think there will be uh, many, many developments on the upcoming years uh, when it comes to, to data and how to storage data and how to treat data in the future. However, from the IGEN side, we always try to keep it uh, very cautious and make sure that we understand and we have the full control over our data, for example, before we take any uh, initiative on this, uh, on this field. Thanks, Fernando. Uh, Michael, do you want to add yeah. something on that? Yeah, I can confirm uh, this view because um, I'm working also for a UK uh, company uh, or UK owned company and uh, to be honest, um, points or uh, uh, data protection, security matters, data data loss prevention is a really big topic for the for 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 UK, and I think much more as as we usually have it here in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is yeah a, a reason to avoid such progress of going forward on this topic. But on the other hand, I think we, we are clear, and, and I think that's, that's also the background of your question. It's clear that banks are a bit or maybe also far behind other branches. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think from a cost efficiency and also to think about new ways um, to maybe also get rid of old systems or old routines, um, we will see here also uh, a movement um, in the, in the next years uh, in, in banking and financial industries. Um, maybe also we can uh, take a look on the um, uh, fintech, uh, insure techs, yeah, because sometimes mm -hmm. they're going these ways because they don't have the old systems, yeah. They can uh, build something new from scratch. And uh, maybe we can, we can, it's such a best effort approach, yeah, and, and you have to then um, take a look what is, uh, what fits to your company. Um, and so I think we have these two points. One is data protection, data loss prevention, uh, because banking uh, built, is built on trust in general, yeah. And I think here's a an, an, an big concern um, with an, um, data loss uh, uh, in terms of reputation loss and all this kind of stuff. But on the other hand, um, we will see this movement and it's not stoppable and so also um, uh, yeah, IT cracks <laughs> or IT leaders have to yeah. think about um, how can they make their company more efficient uh, and um, yeah, turns toward cloud um, and, and uh, outsourcing from IT stuff. Um, yeah, that's my point of view. Thanks, Michael. Um, agreeing on that, I think uh, it's unstoppable. Yeah, and also in the last two years, um, the discussion has moved from um, do we want to do IT outsource um, to a does it make sense to also go to public cloud? And I think maybe we are not there already, but um, we will come to that point. Um, so I'm fully in line with you there. Maybe my last question before I end with a surprise question. Um, as you both, as you said, are um, using many services or doing at least IT outsourcing or running our solutions within our RecTech private cloud, um, do you think we will see banks using on-prem uh, RecTech solutions in, the, let's say, in five years, or will we see a market which is fully, um, yeah, using out, outsourcing for um, operating solutions for RecTech reporting? Fernando, what's your point on here? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think. Uh, it, it would take a lot to, to build something on-prem on, on the short period of time. I think I still see a lot of the, of the outsourcing uh, going on for most of the banks. And I think sometimes uh, it's, it's not the priority for some uh, entities to build this whole structure. So it's just yeah. easier to work with someone that is reliable and have the full picture of everything instead of just having it uh, built uh, yeah, on-premise. That, that's my view for now. Thanks, Fernando. Michael, what's your point here? Yeah, I have a uh, similar view. And mm. um, so far as I understood uh, from, from your side and from other colleagues from Bankpoint, most of your new clients choose the software as a service um, yeah, offer from your side. And I think, um, especially if you're looking uh, on Fernando and on, on our company, uh, it makes clearly sense not to build up the whole IT infrastructure in-house. Yeah, the focus on our companies is clearly a, a different. Mm. And so, um, for us, it, it, it was a clear decision to go um, for a managed service solution. And um, also, if you say that most of your new clients do so, um, I think the trend is clear. Um, but to be honest, I'm not really sure because um, 
if you are an, 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 an bigger bank, uh, and have an, um, an established IT infrastructure, a good uh, stuff in the IT and uh, the system runs, yeah, then I think if Why there's not? no real need for a change, Fair then, um, yeah, so I think we, we will see some, <laughs> some uh, of these uh, clients um, because sometimes could be a clear uh, business decision to say, I want to have it in-house. I want mm -hmm. to have the knowledge here. I want to have yeah, priority on this. Um, yeah, but I think the trend is clear. And so this could be also a point to get more efficient, to um, concentrate on core banking business instead of IT business. Yeah, so let's see and uh, let's talk in five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Thank you very much. Um, so I would want like to close to this very interesting session with you with one further question where I only want one t sentence back, ideally, uh, as we are coming to the end. So, guys, what do you think if you would have a magic wand or a wish? So what would be a single wish for the next five years in the context we have discussed? Uh, would be interesting to hear that, Fernando. Uh, yeah, I think... Uh... Yeah, concluding that project of having real-time reporting with no hassle. I think that would be the main main goal. <laughs> like, yeah, we have the data, right? You know what data you want from us? We just create a, a, a safe connection and you can have mm -hmm. all the data that you want to analyze it the way you want to do it. I think Sounds it goes... <laughs> yeah, sorry that I, I have more than one sentence, but I think it goes a lot with what Michael said. It shouldn't be just <laughs> one-way street. It should be a, a two-way street. Yeah. Thank you. Michael, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can connect on this wish because it's, it's um, similar to this because, uh, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, my clear wish is to simplify supervisory structure, supervisory requirements, and to be honest, abolish many of the old and long mm -hmm. redundant reports and data queries. Um, then all subject matter experts know if we could really focus on interesting stuff, condensed reports, and work on the yeah, stuff which really matters that would be really nice and not uh, to report the whole picture in every yeah, direction that would be really nice. Thanks, Michael. Um, so um, then we come to an end of our session. I would really like to thank you for that open discussion. I'm looking forward to working together with you and uh, would like to hand over to our next slot then. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.